So, to move on quickly, because I've got many topics to talk about and I've got to jet off quickly, I'm going to quickly mention this. This is a little clip uh, courtesy of Math Hoffer on his podcast called, I don't know what it's called actually, his podcast, but anyway, it's Math Hoffer, the legendary battle rapper. He's got his own podcast where he has guys sit in a barbershop and they have real heart-to-heart manly conversations about everything involving culture. And I really, really enjoy it, especially considering Math Hoffer being from the streets. He can get a little bit um, more out of his guests than maybe the average, um, you know, uh, interviewer can. Especially him being a battle rapper and obviously being part of the community in terms of hip hop, being and all that stuff. People maybe relate to him a little bit more. But regardless, he sat down with the baby and had a really good conversation with him about his career, relevancy, all this stuff going up and down, um, you know, drama stuff. But I really like this section that they talk about where ba- the baby basically is expounding on the fact that he hasn't necessarily processed the death of his brother who unfortunately died because of suicide and just basically talking about the struggles of it. And he raised a really good point because he mentioned something like he records a bunch of music that's really personal to him that he never, ever releases. It's just kind of self-therapy. It's never, it's never done for the consumption of the crowd or for regular punters or regular fans like myself. It's only done for him and maybe his close friends and family and that's it. And that stuff never comes out which is pretty insane to think he's got a whole stash of these records in his in his vault that he doesn't release which i think in my opinion especially being the baby fan i would say he's probably struggling a little bit now obviously with the comments that he made and the drama he's gone through but i think a lot of it comes from the fact that people look at him and he just looks like a bully he looks like a big bad bully superman type character who's got no emotions so i think if anything what would actually help his career is if he actually opened up a little bit and decided to be a little bit more vulnerable and put his guard down I'm not the tough guy or I can be the tough guy when when need be, but I also have these emotions like everybody else. I go through, you know, self-doubt. I feel a little bit, whatever, whatever he can make up, you know, in terms of putting it on wax and stuff. I think that would be actually quite beneficial to his career. But anyway, regardless, he made a really good point here where he was talking about something that I thought was really interesting that I wanted to talk about when it comes to birthdays and celebrating them. And something that I kind of was thinking about now because... I was having to describe the pod to people who don't know me and I had to describe it honestly because I don't like to lie, especially people I just met. It just doesn't make any sense lying about stuff. So I kind of laid it on thick in terms of why I started this, which was essentially a self-therapy thing and the fact that I don't really have many real-life friends. I'm trying to keep myself to myself for the most part. I think I could get friends if I wanted to have them, don't get me wrong, but I don't exactly go out of my way to hang out with people. I just stay by myself for the most part. And I like it like that. It is what it is. I'm not going to cry and moan about it. That's my life and I've kind of made my bed and I'm happy to lay in it. But when it comes to birthdays, I've always struggled with that also because I don't ever enjoy or like them. And that may come from some past trauma. It may be a bit of a cope. I'm not really too sure, but the baby speaks about it a little bit. And then I want to kind of expound on it myself and the things that I think about when it comes to birthdays and how I kind of process them, especially nowadays with people doing them on social media and making a big fuss about them. But this is the baby speaking, I think, briefly about it. I think it's around here. Let me see. It'd be like that. It was like that really every time. You know what I'm saying? But I kind of understood why I ain't feel nothing. It's just how I've been set up. Like, I'm, the I'm a nigga who don't even celebrate his birthday, bro. Like, I don't even celebrate my birthday like I'm that type of nigga. Do you get that that's not normal? For sure. Like, as okay. a baby, yeah, like, I'm I starting to... Yeah, but it's not... It's not just I'm starting to peep that. Like, see, it take, it take for you to goddamn... To try to do for others what you wish somebody would do for you. Mm-hmm. And see mm-hmm. that not go the way you... Not go the way you think it would go. Mm-hmm. Then you get it. Then you get that this shit not normal. You get what I'm saying? Like- I'm glad he said that because I thought I was a bit of a freak. Because once you look on social media, you see a lot of people who really, really care about their birthdays. They will, you know, make a birthday week, a birthday month. Like it's crazy how far and how hard people go for their birthdays. And I've always thought after a certain time in your life, maybe over the age of 18, you should maybe knock you on the head if you're a bit of a grown up. Just allow it. It's not that serious. No one really cares. But for some people, it is just a good opportunity to celebrate and get your friends you know, all in one room, have a bit of a good time and just kind of welcome in in the you know a start of another year for you celebrate the fact that you haven't passed away and you're still here to enjoy the fruits of this wonderful life that we live or whatever the reasons may be but i think for me my aversion to celebrate my birthday probably stems from my childhood in terms of i never i never really had the means to celebrate it the way i kind of thought in my head i wanted to celebrate in terms of money and i never was somebody i like to ask for things especially if I kept getting no's. So really early on, if you keep getting no's and you keep getting told you can't do this, can't do that, eventually you just learn to deal with the fact that you can't do it. And you just get numb to the idea of being disappointed or feeling left down or feeling left out. 
I remember one kind of, you know, monumental part of my life where I kind of had to process, okay, I'm not going to be able to do anything that I want to do whilst I'm a kid. I have to just wait until I'm an adult. was when I was uh, in primary school. This is a really dumb example, but it was at like the first thing, first holiday that we had. No, it was the first trip that we had as a... As a uh, yeah, it was the first trip we had in, in primary school, sorry. In primary school, I must have been how old? I guess I was probably 11 or something, or maybe under 11. And it was a trip that you go to Paris, and I think at the time, if I'm not mistaken, it was like a geography trip, something to do with geography. And we were meant to do that and I couldn't go. So it's like a, you went to go to a boarding thing and stay over and sleep. And I remember not being able to go. And I remember being really disappointed and hurt by it. Then we had another trip later on that was a trip to go to Devon. It was another geography trip. So something to do with ag agriculture and whatnot. And I couldn't go to that. And then soon after, I developed a bit of numbness and I put a bit of a guard up when it came to holidays. And I immediately would just make excuses and just dumb it down or just kind of, you know, take the piss out of it. Who wants to go here? Who wants to go there? That's where lame people go. I'll just make all these flipping coping mechanisms. Cope. I had all these coping mechanisms to help me deal with the disappointment or the, with the reality that I had didn't, couldn't go and didn't have the means to go even if I wanted to. That's the main thing I did. And then when it comes to birthdays, I think... It's odd because I had, I used to have really good birthdays. Like when I used to go to church quite often, which was between the years of like what? I must have been from like 18 to 22 or 23. I was going to church religiously like every single weekend. Um, sometimes I'd be going all week during the summer when there'd be a special, you know, um, celeb special event thing going on there. Big up everybody that went to KRCC back in the day. You know the vibes. And it was fun. Had a good time there. But I remember celebrating my birthday pretty decent there. And what would, what would happen is that my parents would give me like, I don't know, 50 quid or something. And I'd take my friends out and we'd go to Nando's. And usually I'd be the one kind of covering the bill. And I loved that thing because I remember at that time also, that was when people were starting to do birthdays where they would invite you to a restaurant. And I remember a lot of people being kind of a bit annoyed that the person would pick, especially if it's your birthday, you want to go somewhere nice and it'd be somewhere quite expensive. So you'd be going to someone's birthday and you'd be like shelling out all this money to go celebrate someone's birthday. And I never really understood how that made sense. So I'd always like to have a bit of money in my pocket so I could go and put some money behind a bar or put some money, you know, pay for everyone's meal at Nando's. Not much, you know what I mean? But it would still be a great way for me to see everyone else's smiles. Even though it's my day, everyone else is kind of happy, having a good time, having a free meal, hanging out and shooting the shit and whatnot. And that would be quite cool. But then the older I got, I just became numb to it. I didn't necessarily care. And I think most of it probably has to do with the fact that I kind of carry this mantra in my head. I've got no friends. I've got no friends. I've got no friends. It's obviously, obviously an insecurity. Even though I say it's not, it definitely is because I know I probably should have some. But I don't ever put myself in a position to get them. Like, I don't really keep in contact with people. I don't like meeting up to do things for the most part. Like, lately, even in, only in the, in the last year or so, have I made a strategic, no, have I made a purposeful effort to try and meet people if they say they want to meet me? Like, I won't let them down. I won't say I'm not, I can't come last minute and flake like I'd always usually do because I just didn't like meeting people. But I've kind of gone through the majority of my life so far just kind of being on my own, which I don't mind, I like. And doing things by myself, like doing things, like even when it comes to jobs, I never like ask somebody for an introduction. I'll just apply the normal way that like everyone else does, whoever's on a job board, I apply that way, do it the do it the clean way without having to ask anybody for help or an introduction or anything along that kind of lines. But I don't necessarily think that's a way to go about life. And as that guy responded to the baby when he said it, saying to him, that's not normal. I kind of got the feeling today when I was talking about why I started the pod. Oh, I got no friends. That's why I started the pod. So I can talk to strangers online or so that I can build this like, you know, community of people all around the world that I feel like I've got a kinship with, even though I don't know them personally and I'm never probably going to meet them. That isn't normal. You should have both. You should have the ability to make friends online, which is great. I've always done it. I'm a forum kid. I'm an old school MSN messenger kid. I'm a black chat kid, right? I'm from that generation of people. That I've always been online all my life. So that kind of makes a lot of sense. But you should have friends in real life too that you can depend on, friends that can help you out, friends that you can lean on, um, ask for advice, ask for help, blah, -de blah, blah, blah. But because I don't like to feel like I'm in debt to anybody or I don't even even saying the word in debt is really really bad but regardless I don't like to feel like I owe anybody anything or that I'm you know responsible for this I just like to kind of move to the beat of my own drum I don't want to have any ties or anything to do with that so that's what probably makes it hard to have friends because clearly you have to kind of give up a little bit of that when you have some sort of friendship 
um, that you want to kind of be on some sort of even playing field or whatever it may be. But I'm glad to know I'm not the only person that goes through this and doesn't celebrate birthdays because I thought for the longest time I was a psycho for doing so. But it's good to know even someone like the baby who's got the means to celebrate his birthday in a big style doesn't necessarily care too tough about it. Maybe his circumstances are different to mine because he might have a lot of pain attached to it that he hasn't really mentioned. Maybe someone passed, maybe something bad happened in his life. Who knows? Or maybe just a consequence of what he's lost. The people he's lost over time don't make you put... He doesn't put you in, a, in an obvious celebratory mood. But I have realised, you know, after talking to people in real life who don't know me and saying aloud the things I think in my head, you, I realised how nutty I must sound to people how weird I must come off um you know if you don't know anything about me overall and yeah I'm, tr I'm I, I've kind of heard myself speak and I want to make sure that I kind of can fix some things that I want to fix and try and make some amends here and there because even a birthday thing it doesn't need to be a celebration just me buying myself a drink and toasting is good enough getting a meal somewhere is good it doesn't need to be like a celebration it can just be legitimately that but I get no, not say nauseous but I get legitimately annoyed like the other day or maybe it was last year maybe it was last year my brothers tried to like you know get me to celebrate my birthday and I was legitimately getting angry like it was only by text as well it wasn't even like they were telling me to go out somewhere I was legitimately getting pissed off like no I don't want to do you know what I mean I'm not I'm not that guy I started working up all these excuses I was like no I just don't want to do it like just leave me alone and I was thinking, hold on, this reaction is not normal. Why are you getting angry that people want to celebrate your birthday? Like, that is weird. But that was the actual reaction I had. So, I don't know, man. It's, it's life, isn't it? It's life. I guess we are the way we are. Maybe I'm a weirdo in that regard. Maybe I'm a weirdo. But I'm glad to have other weirdos out there that are willing to listen to the things that I say. Um, <laughs> even if you don't agree.